everyone, Zygor here. Recently Square Enix released a trailer for Triangle Strategy. It's a new tactical RPG that's coming out in March of 2022. So in accordance with that, I wanted to break down the trailer, give you guys my reactions to it, and talk a little bit about the demo, which you have been able to play for some time. So let's just get right into it. Choices give rise to conflict. Will those decisions lead to... Sarah Noah Wolfort. Hostility. I challenge you to a duel. Betrayal. If you mean to proceed with this folly, then you will do so over my dead body. Or heartbreak. You have gone to the one place I cannot follow. All right, so right off the bat, there's a lot of interesting things in this. Um, I was one that played Octopath Traveler, which was something of a predecessor to this game, and the sprite work looks almost exactly what you saw in Octopath. And that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. I really like this style. It was a callback to um, RPGs of days past, which I really liked. Um, also, just the, the artwork that they're showing outside of the game, the character artwork here is really great, and it looks like they used the same artist from Octopath. I'm not a great artistic mind, but I think you can kind of reasonably see that. Um, the voice acting that they've showed so far seems pretty solid. Um, not much to go off yet, but I'm really intrigued already. I think this is a, a good way to start the trailer. Um, choices give rise to conflict is really an idea that is an interesting one to build a game upon. So I'm really intrigued about that. And I think it plays into the scales of conviction system that we'll talk about in a little bit. Test the weight of your convictions. A brand new tactical RPG, Triangle Strategy. All right, so we have to pause here. Right? Just let's get the elephant. Let's get to the elephant in the room here. The title of the game, Triangle Strategy. I'll touch upon this, I think, a little bit later. But right off the bat, I'm surprised that they went with this title. Um, this game was originally called in kind of its genesis maybe beta period it was called project triangle strategy um and i was just so convinced that there's no way that they're going to end up with this as the working title of the actual game um, they did the same thing for octopath traveler right when that was first introduced it was called project octopath traveler and they went with octopath traveler but i'm surprised this one stuck um, I'll get into a little bit about what I really think about this, but I will articulate my surprise at this being the game's title. Thirty years have passed since the Saltiron War ravaged the land of Norzelia, the Kingdom of Glenbrook, the Grand Duchy of Esfrost, the Holy State of Hyzant. These three nations enjoyed a brief moment of peace. Serenoa Wolfort, young lord of one of Glenbrook's high houses, and Frederica, a lady of Esfrost. Though their betrothal is meant to be a symbol of peace, Norzelia once again finds itself embroiled in war. Alright, so this is a really interesting concept too. I really like the fact that three kingdoms are involved, and maybe kingdoms isn't the right term, but... Um, Hyzant, Esfrost, and Glenbrook. Um, a three-way dynamic is always a good way to kind of wrap someone into a complex story because there's lots of games out there where, you know, essentially the game is more or less about, you know, an evil empire and a resistance that confronts it, right? And some great games are like that. Sweet Coden is like that. Um, Final Fantasy VI is definitely like that. Um, even Final Fantasy VII, to some extent, is like that, even though at some points you're actually almost kind of allying, or allying with Shinra at some point. But nonetheless, I think that the three-way fiefdom, the three power centers, is a good idea because it opens up dynamics in storytelling that aren't always available in two-party um, stories. For instance, there could be clandestine storyline twists where two of those three entities could team up against the other one or one of them could try to play the other two off against each other so i like this concept i think it could be well accomplished well executed and 
Um, really like the backdrop of a marriage betrothal serving as a means of peace or an attempt at peace because that's a classic trope not only in world history but um, could be a good storytelling trope as well. Oland, Prince of Glenbrook, and the loyal strategist Benedict. Their fierce convictions will shape the battles that lie ahead. Pixel and 3D graphics meet in HD 2D. A robust visual style designed to bring this epic chronicle of war to life. All right, I want to talk about this too. So the graphics look very similar in a way to Octopath Traveler. Now, when they show the battle scenes, it does show the isometric view that you wouldn't be used to if you played Octopath, but I love this graphical style. Again, I think this is a nod to the hardcore old school RPGers that really like this dynamic. This is the way that RPGs should have developed, at least as far as I'm concerned, rather than, you know, a first person 3D view or even a, um, omnipotent view that so kind of muddies the waters of RPGs today, if you can even call it that. But hey, I'm a bitter RPG boomer. This is the style I really like. Um, the HD 2D, I think, worked out real well in Octopath. Um, it actually looks almost exactly like Octopath Traveler in this scene here, where you see the character, I assume it's Sarah Noah, running through the kind of fortress area of this castle. Um, I'm really intrigued by this. I love the style. I think this works exactly as it should for this type of game. And just the sprite work looks excellent. This, this sprite work is exactly what I want to see. Um, no crazy 3D polygons. This is the old school feel that I want from this type of game. I'm really intrigued by that. Characters engage with a host of unique personalities. Out of my way! Arms master, Eridor Ballantyne. Supper spy, Anna Pascal. Right. Kingsguard, Hewett Butler. Victory is inevitable. Tutor, Gila Brace. Battle. All right, so just showing the differences between the characters, um, I'm assuming that they're going to go with something of a class-based archetype system, but what's not clear to me, even in playing the demo, is whether other characters, other than those designated ones, can be of the same class. For instance, Anna's a spy, right? But I don't know if that class is distinct to her. So I'm not sure if you can get other characters um, along your journey or recruit them and make them a spy as well, but in a way, I think that's a double-edged sword. I kind of like the super distinctive um, position of a character that it's completely unique, but in a, in a way, it's also nice to be able to customize your party. So we'll have to see how that turns out. I'm really intrigued by the, the balance that they make here between classes because some games, I feel, kind of ruin the class balances. Um, Tactics Ogre, The Knight of Lodis, for instance, is an awesome game, excellent um, kind of sequel to the Tactics Ogre franchise, but I felt that some classes in that game were super overbalanced, um, super overpowered, I should say, and just made some of the classes not even worth taking. So um, in a game like this, when there's so many different classes that you can utilize and build your party around, I really hope that they have done their due diligence in QA to make sure that there's balance. But either way, I like the niche that some characters have. Games that allow too much customization, I feel, almost kind of drops the uniqueness of a character in their arc. So um, we'll have to see how this unfolds. Confront the enemy in complex strategic battles. Utilize the terrain and your allies' abilities to claim victory. Now! All right, so the combat they showed there was awesome i think this is just great it, it's an immediate um it's an immediate reminder of final fantasy tactics and tactics ogre they mentioned the terrain playing a part in battles um positioning you could see the grid system the other thing i noticed was that there's little connecting lines between enemies and allies so um i i think that this from the demo is the best way of showing whether your attacks can hit those enemies, which is something that's been lacking in a lot of other tactical RPGs. So I'm really interested to see um, how this plays out, if some of those um, 
is a hindrance because sometimes in games like this, too many things on the screen um, can kind of conflict with UI and uh, other things. But all of a sudden, this is just astounding to me. I'm very, um, very impressed so far by what I see. If only it's like Final Fantasy Tactics. Immerse yourself in a deep, branching story. Bring the scales. Your choices and actions determine your conviction and affect the fate of you and your allies. Where will your convictions lead you? So scales of conviction system that they're showing here, I think is what is going to set this game apart from any other game. Um, I've talked about how there's a lot of kind of similarities between a game like this, so far as it seems, and Final Fantasy Tactics and Tactics Ogre, but the Scales of Conviction system seems to be brand new, or at least I think so. And other games give the, the main character a choice of how to proceed in the storyline, but this Scales of Conviction system um, from playing the demo is very cool. So after individual battles, you're given a choice on how to proceed, and it's usually a deep question. Um, for instance, in the demo after the first battle, the main character is given the decision whether to kind of help protect his best friend or the realm that he's responsible for serving. And what's unique about this is that choice seems to be monumental. And by that I mean that it seems to change and alter the course of where the game's story goes. Because in the demo, if you choose one of those two options, you'll get a completely different fight than if you chose the other option. The other cool thing that I've seen is um, when you're making these decisions, you have the ability to persuade the other characters about what they should do, um, what choice they should make. So the main character only has one choice, but uh, his companions also get to make a choice. And if you don't exercise kind of that persuasive power, it could go in the direction that you don't want it to go. Um, I was actually able to see from the demo there are some places where you could actually go out into town and gather clues and more information um, to kind of guide that choice. And then it opens up new options um, for persuading your allies. So very cool aspect of this game. Really interested to see how this unfolds. And what I'm thinking about right now is what if they make it so the scales of conviction system will only allow you to get certain characters and recruit them if you make the right options. So there's a lot of possibilities this could open up. It might not just be storyline in the traditional sense of telling a story, but you might be able to only get certain items, characters, and other things by certain choices. Consume you! A tactical RPG that will challenge your conviction. There can only be one way forward. All right, so that's it. That's the trailer. Um, very good trailer, solid trailer of just under three minutes. Showed off a lot of the different aspects to expect in the game. Um, I think it focused mostly on combat and at the beginning, kind of the basis of the story, which is great. Great combination of facts to show. Um, the title, Triangle Strategy, I'm just going to come out and say it. I don't like it. I think it's a crappy title. They could have been so much more unique or creative in how they made this title. If they wanted to make it something involving the number three, which seems to be indeed the key number of this game, not only in the terms of king, the kingdoms, the three kingdoms or fiefdoms um, represent a triangle. Um, at the beginning of this trailer it used, you know, three descriptor words, heartbreak, and I forgot the other two at, at the moment, but um, it seems to be the key number, but you could have represented that number in a different way. So you could have used like trio of power or um, kind of triumvirate or something like that to make it more creative. I just think triangle strategy, uh, it's just, it's too vanilla. It's too milk toast. It's not what I wanted to see. And I feel, I feel like this might be a bad marketing decision. Um, it's bit rare that I see a game described by its genre to have strategy in it is very odd i think that this could have been done a lot better um could have gotten quite a bit more creative but either way regardless of the title almost everything about this seems intriguing to me um, the only thing i don't think that we've gotten a great sense of from the trailer and the demo yet is the breadth of the soundtrack 
Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I thought the Octopath Traveler soundtrack was awesome. Um, if this one's anything like that, there's room for a lot of gaming hours ahead. Alright, so here's the Scales of Conviction system. This is where it allows you to go to party mean? members and persuade them to a particular decision. So, right here you see Gila saying her text, but then you are able to persuade. And what I thought was cool about this was that unlockable option there, the number three, it unlocked because of clues that we had ascertained from other NPCs. So, just a really unique system I here. So. Um, I chose two anyways, um, but depending on how you select options here, you'll get the scales to tip in one of two directions. This first one involving Roland's fate seems to be one of the most important choices that you probably make in the entire game because it's the first one. So here you can see the culmination of I your persuasion you. tactics. Your allies are kind of giving their vote, per se, to the scales. I believe I can decide this matter with confidence. <laughs> the voice acting's really good. Nice little touches. Doesn't go off too long. So... And then I think skipping ahead basically has this little scene where it shows which way the scale is tipped, which is the ultimate way in which your path goes. There it is. It's an interesting the system. Way forward is decided. We'll have to see how this plays out. How fair you, Benedict. All right, so my just storyline sequence complete. here in between I fights. I trust you're ready as well, my lord. <sighs> as ready as I shall ever be. We have given ourselves every advantage that we can, my lord. Indeed we have. I only hope that it is enough. My lord, the Esfrosty forces are on the move. And so it begins. Our foe advances. Take up your positions, everyone, and be ready for the signal. So just storyline sequence in between fights here. It seems like this game doesn't give you too much of one type of gameplay at a time, so there'll be moments where there's storyline sequences, times that you can spend in villages, getting items, um, buying equipment, things like that, and then battles. And it's kind of sequenced to throw those things such that there's not so much monotony though i will say some of these sequences between battles are really long now some people might kind of get discouraged by that but um i think that i'm gonna like that i can see how a player would want to have more of an interactive role in the gameplay than witness you know several minutes of storyline sequences but that makes a great rpg in my mind um, I mean, I love Xenogears, and some of that game sequences are 20 plus minutes, or it seems like that anyway. So um, I like how they develop the story, good voice acting, the characters fit into their roles real well, and the game does a good job of developing the story and the political dynamics between the kingdoms. All right, Time so for some research. Some of the battle scenes here, you can see it's grid based. It shows you both where your character was and where it could move to. That's interesting. Um, you can also flank enemies, much like most tactical RPGs, to do more damage. I wasn't quite sure what the difference between pink and blue was, so if you're watching this, feel free to drop that down below. From where shall we strike? It's probably something simple that I'm just overlooking. But. See, elevation seems to play a role here, too. High ground is always better. You can kind of snipe opponents. And Roland, who plays a major role in the story, is definitely involved here. Yes, <laughs> well met. Some great animations and spray work, and as you just saw there, he flanked with another ally and enemy. And when you attack an enemy like that, your ally also gets an attack swing in too, which is very cool. Good system here. <laughs> the 
lot happens quickly, but uh, I must hold firm. it's fun to play these out. These battles are very long. These battles are, seem to be much longer than in games like Tactics Ogre and Final Fantasy Tactics. I can't tell whether I think that's a good or bad thing yet, but it's definitely something to consider here. See, the spells go quickly. I'm kind of hoping that there's not, like, one minute long animations like there was in Final Fantasy VII Summons or Final Fantasy Tactics at times. I think it detracts a little bit, but what I see is great, great graphical spells. So there's another flank attack where Anna got in a swing and then Benedict did as well. Very cool. You can see there's character unique abilities here. She's a spy. A slumber slip. My strategy is superior. That seemed to work. There you go, another Good flank. Weekend. So a lot of cool battle dynamics here. I am very intrigued. Um, it seems to even be a step up from what you might see in a lot of the other tactical RPGs out there. Alright, so that's about it. Overall, this game looks really interesting to me. It's very rare that a new game these days really attracts my interest. I haven't played many games at all since the PlayStation 3 era, so this is one that I definitely want to play as soon as possible. March can only come so soon. Um, the game combines awesome gameplay, it seems, a good story, some really cool battle mechanics. Don't like the name, as I said earlier, <laughs> Triangle Strategy doesn't really just seem that great. But overall, very, very, very much looking forward to this game. But I want to hear from you guys. What did you think about the demo and the trailer that was recently released? Leave me a comment below and let me know. Also, like and subscribe to my channel to receive more retro gaming content, and hope to see you in the months to come.